Yo, what's going on everybody? TJ here. And I wanted to make this video to explain how I set my support and resistance level while I'm trading, uh, because this is very important. And it's actually really cool to see like once you realize like how people are trading the markets and how you can set your trades up. So right now we're looking at IWM. Today it is October 22nd. 2020 and as you can see here i have this trade expiring this is a bull put credit spread which means i'm selling the 159 put and i'm buying the 160 put so that means that i just want the stock to close above these two lines right you always want whatever if like if the uh, the sell is on the top, then you want it to be closing above it. If the sell is on the bottom, then you want it to be closing below it. That's a good way to remember it. Bull put, bear call, right? Bull put, bull up, bear call, bear down. All right, past that lesson, we're going into support and resistance levels here. So right now I'm in this trade. Um, this is my real money account. And I'm actually going to be closing this IWM tomorrow, this 158.50, 159 trade. So how I set these trades up is you can see where the price horizontally on, on a chart, where horizontally it's not being able to break through. And people are doing this all the time on purpose. It's actually really, really crazy once you realize the strategy. So for instance, like let's say the price was down here. It went up, right? Hit this level, right? It hit this price right here. Okay. Let's see. It says it closed at 156 and 88 cents. So it hit that level right there. Bounced off of it, okay? This is now resistance bounced off of it, came down, right? Got close to this support level that I have set, came back up, bounced off of this line again, okay? Then it came back down, right? Played a little bit down here, tank a little bit, shot back up. It broke through. Well, first off, on this candle, you can see that it actually closed right under it, okay? Then we broke resistance, came up over here. We hit this same exact line now as support. This is now a support level that people are using. Came back up, it's going back down. Here's yesterday, hit support. And now today we're bouncing back up. That is how you figure out support and resistance levels. You can see a price that has been hit over and over again, and that's a good indicator that it's a support or a resistance level, or it'll end up becoming both. So that's how I set this trade up. Um, I got into this trade somewhere around here, right? And I was hoping that it just went up, but that would have been best case scenario. In reality, we're actually playing off of this line. It got a little close for comfort here. Not going to lie. I woke up like, what is the market going to do today? Because just because it's a support level doesn't mean that it's going to use it as support. It can break through. And if it does, you got to use that as an indicator for where the market may be going. But luckily, we bounced off this. Here we are today. There is two hours left of the trading day. So hopefully we stay up here. Then tomorrow, keep on hoping that it just continues to go up and just uses this as a support, doesn't break through because I set my trade right below the support line because I knew that this was a support level. I knew it. I knew that it was likely not going to break this spot. That's why I set this trade right below it. Even right down here, you can see I have another one down here. It's a bit longer out. Let's see. I have one expiring on next Friday, eight days, and then I have one expiring one month from now on the same exact trade. And I use this because I made this orange line, right? It came up here, tapped the spot, played under for a bit, 
broke through, then used it for two days as a new support instead of the resistance because it resisted it right here. But now it was playing it as support here, bounced up off this line, came back down, hit this as a support, right? Then bounced off this resistance, came closed on the support, but broke through. Then it played off of it as a resistance level, bounced off this one. Right here was a resistance level, broke through, used it as a support, but then broke through. And then use it right here as a major resistance level before we open way above market. So you can see that this right here, this is another very strong support and resistance level. So hopefully tomorrow it doesn't break this one, right? Hopefully we want to just keep it as a strong support level right here. We close that trade, but let's say within the next eight days, because this is a trade for the next eight days, let's say it does end up breaking through. I have this line now as another strong support level that I know it's going to have trouble breaking through because there's a ton of other people out in the world trading just like we are using the same exact price points as support and resistance. So collectively, people are trading in patterns and people don't want to see this break, but sometimes it will. If it does, it's very unlikely that it's going to break through this one as well. It's possible, but this is definitely going to end up being some of a supportive resistance. You know, it's not going to push through as easily as if it was just like a random spot in the market. All right. And that is an awesome way to place your trades to put where your strikes should go. I'll give you another quick example. Here's Activision Blizzard. So right up here is a support, right? And right down here, or no, I'm sorry, this is a resistance up here. This is a support down here. And I noticed that it's sideways in between these two points. That's why I have one trade up here and another trade down here, creating an iron condor. This is also expiring tomorrow. And look at how perfect. This is literally where we are right now. We're almost dead center of these two trades. So this is another way to play the support and the resistance on the top and the bottom at the same time. If you see it moving sideways, you could do both. And now you have two trades. That is the iron condor strategy. All right, so today is November 3rd. It is the 2020 election day. And I figured today is actually a really good time to follow back up on this video. Show you guys exactly what ended up playing out here. So we were last here on, November, on October 22nd. And I had a trade going on right here. The following day, we ended up closing up here. It was a fully successful trade. I think I made $115 on this trade. All right, next day, came down, hit our support level here. The day after that, we broke through support and ended up using it as a resistance. And right here, this is your sign that the market might be going the opposite direction. So because of the craziness of the pandemic and the election, the day after that, the market ended up jumping way down, opening right here, closing right here. But look how amazing this is. It hit and closed right on this other support level that I had set here. Bounce off this for the next couple of days. Yesterday started to bounce back up. And today we jumped up again. Today's election day. So you never know exactly what the market is going to be doing because the news does play a little bit on what the market is going to do. However, regardless of that, we are still hitting support and resistance levels. So isn't that such a crazy strategy to just use these lines as support and resistance? So wild to actually see it play out and hit off of your lines. And this is a great way to set your strike points and know when and where to go into your trades. All right, um, real quick, Activision, just to show you guys, we closed somewhere around here on the Iron Condor, full profit. Uh, then it tanked down because of earnings. And I specifically got out before earnings on purpose because this does happen. But that is for another day's video. Uh, one last little thing. Whatever software you're using, you can use your pencil to draw a trend line. And I will pretty much line it up 
with the top of the highest candle and extend it outward so that you have some space for the future. And that is how you draw support and resistance. All right, I hope that this video was really helpful to you. If it was, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Feel free to share this with your friends, family, others that you want to help learn how to trade successfully. Um, and if you want to see more of these tips, more of my personal trade journey, as well as other entrepreneurial financial tips and travels, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell so you're notified on the next video and I will catch you guys on the next one. Later.